listening to other R&B guitar players, I put two and two together that a lot of the things that they're doing are mimicking the the vocal runs that singers are doing. Like right. singers don't have frets in their voice. So <laughs> if they were to sing, it wouldn't be, you know, it would be. Right. So there's well, like, that little thing yeah. you did, they'd have to be a really good singer to do to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like that's the thing about blues, like just, you know, sounds so human. Hey everybody, Gary here with Pal Music, and I want to welcome you to this conversation and guitar lesson with guitarist, singer, and songwriter, Melanie Fay. My goal with these conversations is to introduce you to the people and ideas that will help you to develop your craft, stay inspired, and design a life where your creativity can thrive. In this conversation and guitar lesson, we discuss Melanie's development as a musician, her unique style of playing guitar, dynamics and phrasing, her influences, teaching and learning, visualizing the fretboard and getting out of the box, adulthood, self-employment, and balancing social media, business, and creativity. During the lesson segment, she teaches us note by note both the melody and chords of her 25 second original song demo entitled Fan Art. She walks us through all of the nuances of her unique phrasing that really bring the melody and chords to life. Throughout the interview and lesson, I've added our Fret Live fretboard animations, tab and related video and audio clips to help you get the most out of the experience. To the generous POW Music patrons that make these free videos possible, you can download a PDF of the tab and notation to go along with Melanie's lesson here, and you could access a patron-only video that shows the Fret Live animation and tab at the same time for fan art. You could also access a bonus lesson I made where we go more in depth on different possible names of some of the chords in Melanie's chord progression and discuss naming conventions with more complex chords like flat 13 versus sharp 5, major 9 versus add 9, and we also go over the chord number system and when to call a chord by its sharp name or flat name depending on what key you're in. All of this is available at patreon.com slash palmusic and the direct link to that material is in the description. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy my conversation and lesson with Melanie Fay. All right, so today I'm joined by the incredible guitarist, musician, singer, and songwriter, Melanie Fay. Melanie was born in Huntsville, Alabama, and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. Her guitar journey began in elementary school with the Guitar Hero game, but then in sixth grade, she got her first real guitar. She attended a performing arts high school where she studied jazz guitar and continued her studies at MTSU. Being inspired by artists like Mariah Carey, Michael Jackson, and Jimi Hendrix, she's mixed those influences together with her jazz knowledge to form her very unique R&B style. In 2016, Melanie started posting videos of covers and originals to Instagram, and it wouldn't be long before she was getting the attention of artists like John Mayer, Chance the Rapper, SZA, Shawn Mendes, No Name, Mac DeMarco, and Willow Smith many of which she's collaborated and performed with. She recently released her first EP and is spending some of her time during this COVID era giving live guitar lessons, one of which I had the pleasure of attending last week. Melanie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Gary. Thank you for coming. It's an honor. <laughs> <laughs> the honor is all mine. So, um, I first heard you probably on Instagram or YouTube. I'm more of a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. and Me too. was immediately like just so drawn into your phrasing and mm -hmm. um, guitarists I tend to gravitate to or musicians are musicians that have like a personal voice like a unique thing where you could just hear five or ten seconds and you're like oh yeah that's Melanie Fay oh that's Grant mm -hmm. Green oh that's Wes Montgomery that's Jimi Hendrix you know um, so I'm always fascinated by that and I feel like players that do that become highly influential and i could tell like you're you're right now very influential for a lot of people which is great mm -hmm. um the challenge for me is always how can i take something from that without imitating that i don't want to like cop people's style uh but it's so hard not to when you see something you, you want to like incor incorporate that into your playing um how do you feel about that? How do you feel about people being like, show me your licks, I want to play that? Yeah, I don't have a problem with it at all. Like someone playing my licks or someone wanting to play my licks. It's it's pretty cool to see people learning my songs. Yeah, 
it's like I see every day someone covering one of my songs or one of my covers and then tagging me in the cover and you know it's cool like that people feel inspired that's awesome so so you sounds like you have more of like a generous attitude about it where you're like just happy people are responding positively Mm -hmm. to it yeah cool so did you like set out to craft like a unique voice and work on your own way of phrasing notes or was it just some sort of like a natural byproduct to what you were going for like can you talk a little bit about your vision of your sound and how it kind of came to be yeah i went to an arts high school and studied jazz guitar and I studied with Dr. James Satterwhite at National School of the Arts High School. So that's why I extensively use jazz chords. Like his favorite chord was, you know, that that voicing of that could either be a C major seven, like it could be fifth root and third and major seven on top. Or you could think of it as an A minor nine. It could be, it's versatile. You could use it in different contexts, like depending on the key or depending on the context you're using it in. It could be a different chord, but you know, stuff like. Here's just a quick 20 second diversion illustrating this concept Melanie just shared from my lesson on how Melanie Faye plays a 251, which I'll link in the description, but here she's on a D minor, not an A minor. context. So you'll see her do that over say a D minor chord, which would be a D minor nine, or you might see her play this as an F major seven chord as if this was the root. And here she's using it as a G, as like a kind of G seven substitution that type of stuff uh, we used extensively at the school and like we learned a lot of chord melodies so you know like uh, I don't think I'm playing this in the original key but Misty, right? Yeah, Misty. But um, yeah, that that going to that school was extremely influential to my style and is the reason why I'm where I'm at in my guitar playing. And I'm especially where I'm at because going into the high school, I wasn't the, I hadn't been playing the longest. You know, I had been playing for three and a half, four years. So I wasn't like, the top student like I wasn't like the you know the best but going to school and sitting next to people that were the best rubbed off on me yeah pretty much I feel like that's the a lot of people knock school and music Mm -hmm. school like hey just study with a teacher uh you know don't waste your money that kind of thing but I think the for me the most valuable part of school was what you just said like being part of a community and and um, being around other players. So you're saying that helped you kind of like want to rise to the occasion in a sense. Yeah, um, I didn't really have any choice but to because people there were just so good. Like they were playing all these, you know, these crazy like jazz chords that I had never heard before and like passing chords and all these scales I wasn't familiar with like going into the school um, or prior to going to that school I did have a private lessons teacher but um, he wasn't he was a trumpet player primarily and he had an extensive understanding of music theory but he happened to play a little bit of guitar. Mm -hmm. So he taught me the very little bit of guitar that he knew, you know, just like open chords and like, you know, 
the cage system, bar cords and, you know, power cords and stuff. And while I was studying with him in middle school, I also watched a lot of YouTube videos. I watched a lot of Marty Schwartz and Justin Guitar and learned, you know, how to play, you know, Sweet Child O' Mine, you know. And, you know, like, Enter Sandman. It's cool that you can still recall those like that. <laughs> yeah, like, it's in my muscle memory Or now. a little of this one. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> But just going to the the art school took my playing to a whole different level. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Did you have to audition to get into that school? I did. I auditioned with My Heart Will Go On. And it was, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Sunga Jung. Sunga. I've seen his videos. Yeah. They're crazy. I yeah. learned his version of My Heart Will Go On. And I auditioned and I got in. Yeah. That's awesome. So cool. Um, but still, so so you got into the school and uh, so did all those other kids. And I studied jazz in school. And f somehow, though, you took that influence and, and got to your own style and voice. So I'm really mm -hmm. curious about how that went from a vision to a reality. And maybe it wasn't a vision. Maybe it was just you naturally just following some north star and that's where you ended up so like how did you go about mixing kind of all this stuff together to craft your own voice if if you could answer that <laughs> yeah it wasn't an intentional thing i just would mimic everything that i thought sounded good right like i would mimic everything you know i sat next to hank compton in high school so hank compton is a guitar player okay. i sat next to him i sat next to kelly janae in, in guitar class in high school and you know who else uh there's this kid named marcus i think his last name is wanner marcus wanner you can shout look them all marcus. up this is yeah. good you're giving some shout outs <laughs> yeah you can like google all of them like they're all guitar players i went to high school with um and i actually went to high school with natalia dyers from stranger things which is off topic but like oh, there were a lot cool. of there was a lot of talent at the school um but just sitting next to them in class just took my playing to a whole new level. It's just listening to them every day and then learning from the teacher and then learning from them. Just It just took me to a whole new level and learning from all those different styles kind of, um, or it contributed to me having my own style because it's like my own style, but then a mixture of, everyone else mm -hmm. that I listened to, you know, and my teacher was obsessed with, you know, West Montgomery and Joe Pass and, you know, Charlie Christian. So those were like his top favorite guitar players. So I, even though I am not very familiar with any of those three guitar players I named off, my teacher taught us jazz standard renditions by those guitar players so indirectly you know i have like a strong joe pass influence or like yeah memory influence so. absolutely yeah that's cool one of the issues i found with jazz is a lot of the people i met that were playing and even mentors i had kind of stayed within a style that was part of the 50s and 60s and 40s, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. and and didn't and kind of treated modern music as something separate, right? Yeah. What's really exciting now, like, to me, I would say, like, Jay Dilla is like a modern Charlie Parker, in a sense. Yeah. Like, like, what he's done with just how we approach rhythm and beat and, like, get outside of the box of harmony. Um, and then seeing like how then the neo soul era developed, and and you had uh, players like Roy Hargrove now collaborating with um, you know and Robert Glasper with uh, all these other more pop and rap people. Like I feel like now such a great era for jazz, but people aren't calling it jazz, but it's this new way of approaching those harmonies and improvisation and everything and i feel like you're kind of part of that which is very cool um yeah so 
I feel like a lot of jazz people have needed permission to kind of come over to new sounds and new styles. And I see a lot of players that might have had this more traditional background are now getting involved in all sorts of music. And mm -hmm. you're, you're one of them, so that's, that's super cool. But as far as, um, you, you mentioned Mariah Carey a lot, being like the amount of times, because I've researched before this interview, like interviews and stuff, mm -hmm. like you really, Mariah Carey, butterfly, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's my thing. Yeah. Yeah, so when you thing. say, and I love that you, you are so influenced by her vocals. So what was it mm -hmm. like where you were like, I'm going to transcribe Mar Mariah's singing and I'm going to get this into my fingers. Like, what was that process like? Is that where a lot of those, those kind of trills and slides come from that yeah. process? And just like, um, you know, listening to other R and B guitar players, I put two and two together that a lot of the things that they're doing are mimicking the the vocal runs that singers are doing. Like, right. You know, Carrie Too Smooth, Marshall. Oh, he's he, awesome. Uh, yeah, you know, he has like these YouTube video lessons and you know, I would watch those sometimes. And then he he kind of pointed out that when, when he's playing guitar, he's singing. He's phrasing it like a singer, you know? Or, or like using legato like a singer would use legato. It's like singers don't have frets in their voice. So <laughs> if they were to sing, it wouldn't be, you know, it would be. Right. So there's well, like, that little yeah. thing you did, they'd have to be a really good singer to do, to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like that's the thing about blues, like just, you know, sounds so human. But mm -hmm. yeah, what you're doing and what a lot of modern guitar players are doing is adding another really human thing that at the same time humans are doing with their voice more. Mm -hmm. These kind of like trills and decorations. So it's yeah. like, it's so cool. So let's, um, one thing I want to do is like take one, a song of yours uh, and uh, it's called fan art. So fan art yeah. is it's a little like 25 second video You put out a couple versions and the melody is pretty simple. The chords are pretty simple, but I feel like it's so stylistically you So can you first show us uh, how the melody would sound like with no decoration, just just the frets, no humanity? <laughs> like, I, I, that's basically where I got. Or it would be. If you were right. to just play it with no palm muting, no slides, no hammer-ons. Yeah. And how do you play it? <laughs> and it would be... Or it's... Or yeah, so soulful. Like, you, you can't help but, like, really, really feel that. So, uh... Can we go over that, like phrase by yeah. phrase, what's going on there? Yeah. Cool. So we are. I'm gonna make you full screen too. Let me see. Yeah. There we go. So we're in the key of B flat minor. Okay. Oh, B flat. Okay, cool. So all of the notes are in the B flat natural minor scale. When you're playing it there, so you're kind of going between, you're going between kind of like fret six to twelve. Are you 
Do you conceptualize scales in terms of like five vertical patterns or in terms of like across the string? How do you visualize when you're in a key? Yeah, that's a good question. So previously I was visualizing it as the different vertical patterns. Mm -hmm. But now that I've been teaching consistently, yep. I've been reconceptualizing the fretboard yeah. or I've been reconceptualizing the way that I conceptualize the fretboard. I know different guitar players conceptualize the fretboard differently, which is why, you know, different guitar players have different styles or they'll play differently. Or there's a lot of reasons why different guitar players play differently, but the different fretboard conceptualizations right. contribute to, they like, strongly contribute to the different styles. But now I am doing this thing where sometimes I'll play the scale on just one string. Mm. I so, saw that video of you with the John Mayer's guitar. Yeah. Doing, doing the jam on was, one string. That was cool. see what it was i was trying to target chord tones on just one string so it was um i was playing over uh, the major two five one to minor two five one that you did the video lesson on it was the and i was going or i think i was in a different key i think or there it is That's the C major, or that's yeah. the two five one in C major, then the two five one in A minor. Cool. Like I was trying to play chord tones on just one string. So lately I've been looking into just playing chord tones on one string and then I'll go from string to string, like instead of vertical position to vertical position. So yep. I'll just be on one string and then jump to another string and play that one vertically, then jump to another string. Awesome. So that's something that I've been doing lately, but previously I was just doing the vertical patterns. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm definitely studying right now. I've been cool. studying more than ever now that I teach, so. That's awesome. I have so many, so many questions for you. But yeah, let's, let's go to your, uh, your riff with that, with that in mind then. But with this oh. riff in the key of, what was it, B flat minor? Yeah. So mainly, I'm in the, this natural minor box. The one that starts on the sixth fret. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, on the B in, I think, high E string, I'm adding these extra notes, so it's... Then... I'm adding, like, those extra two notes on those two strings, but other than those two strings, I was just staying in this box. Okay. Oh, I'm out of the box on the G string, too. So I guess... Or maybe I was thinking... And then yeah I was mostly in this box but and, I think and like if your answer is I wasn't thinking about anything I just then that's another mm -hmm. answer like I think there are many players like that that are like I'm not thinking about any box at all so yeah like I always like to find out sometimes I'll like uh, I just know the notes of the scale by ear, so sometimes I'll just like find the notes without thinking in terms of a position sometimes. Yeah. Cool, yeah. So it starts off. Yeah. 
it's a hammer on from the ninth fret to the eleventh fret. Actually, I'm gonna do true Melanie face style with the fingers. <laughs> nice. I've got nails too, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just nails for no reason. Like I just like the look. I, don't I actually... couldn't believe in in that first lesson I saw you do. Your nails were long on your left hand too, but it wasn't yeah. holding you back. <laughs> yeah, I I just like the aesthetic. I but I don't actually play with my nails, so I don't finger pick with nails. I just use the flesh of my fingers. I just mm -hmm. like having extra long nails they're really short right now because they broke they'll grow and then just like snap off right yeah okay so hammer on uh you said from nine to eleven on the b string yes cool so it's a hammer on and then two palm muted picks so actually i think the hammer on is also palm muted so it's this video is like three years old, so I I don't watch it. So I'm just kind of guessing here. If you want, I have it up. I could actually actually let's let's do that real yeah. quick. Um, here's my questions for Melanie, and then uh, there's this one. No, it's not that one though. Uh, oh, you're talking about that no. This one. is not the one though. Oh. This is not the one. Uh, yeah, the one you're see. talking about is the one with the. Um, it's like a live video, like. Yeah. Um, it'll, and it'll. I called it fan art because um, I was getting a lot of fan art at the time. So that's, that's so why. cool. Yeah. There it is. Much feel. It's so good. One more time. All right. Since it's so short. Okay, now I recall. Nice. So it's actually... So it's four picks after the hammer-on, so one, two, three, four. And there, I'm using my index finger and palm muting. Right, so you're just kind of catching a little bit of that palm at the bridge. Yeah. Cool. Then the last one, I let it rip, like just, you know, so it's... Ah, I get the dynamics. There's like dynamics, yeah. Exactly. Yep. Or, so. Because I wanted to build, that's why... I was kind of using the palm mutes as a as anticipation for the yeah you kind of ramped us up yeah one habit that i have to break as kind of like is the always wanting to do that constantly i always the vibrato wanna, i always want to do it i have to stop like you're not doing it but you don't need to because you're using these other techniques Yep. Cool, I control. But the vibrato comes in on the that note, I think. Oh, okay, cool. For a split second before. Right. No. No, wait. Right oh, in between. Down, right yep. there, okay. Exactly. Cool. Or it's... And I was... I think the... Uh, 
the humbuckers on my Epiphone Genesis inspired me to do that because the way the pickups were at the time, I, I've changed the pickups, but they were very um, touch sensitive. Uh -huh. So that's why I was, I was doing, I was playing it like that. Like different guitars inspire me to, pl to play differently or they inspire different techniques. Yeah, I noticed you have yeah. quite a stable of guitars for sure. I do. And, uh, I really love this one. And it's I very like obscure. Yeah. Back and forth between the humbuckers and the single coils. You actually have inspired me to want to get humbuckers because I have all like Strat style guitars. Right. For a long time, I only had single coils. I had a P90 Gibson SG Special and then I had this guitar mm -hmm. and all throughout high school. So I sold my Gibson. I hate that I did that. I regret it and I will never sell another guitar ever again if I don't have to because they're so sentimental. Maybe yeah. you could buy it back from from the person. Yeah, I I had his number cuz I sold it on Craigslist, but his number's in my old phone and my old phone doesn't turn on, so now it's just gone forever. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. I've I've had plenty that have got like the the one that got away. There's like five of those. <laughs> Maybe he'll watch this video and be like, "Oh, I'll sell it to you." Because yeah. if he would sell it to me, I would buy it back today. I I would. I there, regret. There's a video it of uh, Isaiah Sharkey uh, getting his old first strap back. Really? He made an Instagram video. He's like, "I got rid of this guitar and I got it back," and he just starts ripping on uh, "Belief" by John Mayer. So what's this, man? Man, this is a guitar I just got today, man. And funny enough, this guitar, I had it when I was 17 years old. It's kind of like my first real guitar, the EMGs and all this stuff. And uh, man, my friend that moved away, I traded him this like 10 years ago. And man, I missed it and I hate I got rid of it, but I got it back, you know? <laughs> That inspires me. Wait, so how did, what was the story of him getting it back? I don't know exactly how he got it back, but it was his friend filmed him. He said, so tell me about this guitar. He said, I got rid of this guitar when I was young, but I just got it back. And it, it's a black strat and he just starts ripping on it. Ah, that inspires me. Yeah, I got to get my guitar back. I need it back. Like, it just hurts my heart. Like, just not having it. Yeah. Yeah. I have to figure out how to re-obtain that guitar. Maybe he's still in Nashville. I sold it to him in Nashville, so. I yeah. saw your, just in prep of this, I, I scrolled through your Instagram and I think I saw your post to sell that guitar. Was that yeah. like a few years ago? Yeah, I sold it because I took it for granted. Basically, it wasn't, um, I felt like it was cheaply made and I felt like it wasn't, that good of a guitar right like it didn't but that's part of the reason why i'm why i have such a good feel because that guitar was not um it wasn't very helpful when it came to tone it's it's not like it really had a good tone so i had to work extra hard on my technique to get the guitar to sound good so because I played on that guitar for so many years, like I knew how to make it sound good, but it just took a lot of work. Um, like that guitar was just very finicky when it came to dialing in the correct amp settings and, and the touch that it required to get it yeah. to sound good. But that's part of the reason why I'm where I'm at in my guitar playing, so. We just, you just like illustrated two really important points. Like mm -hmm. one is don't sell guitars that you learn on. No, <laughs> you know, especially don't do it. like they're part of your journey. Yeah. And then the second is like, if you feel like you need the best guitar in the world, you might be doing yourself a disservice because yeah. to learn how to play well on a guitar that, as you said, is finicky and maybe not the best guitar. Mm -hmm. Then when you go to a really good guitar, it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I just, I regret it, but maybe I'll get it back because it was a it was a Gibson SG Special '60s tribute, so it was one of the like lower end Gibsons, yeah. the ones that were supposed to be a little bit stripped back to be more affordable. Right. So, and it used to cramp my hand because <laughs> it, I guess 
maybe it was because it had it was like a 60s slim taper neck mm -hmm. but it just used to cramp my hand but both of these guitars have a very thick neck so these are not slim necks at all but yeah. i do prefer the the thicker neck i guess um because the thin ones cramp my hand but i hope the dude watches this video and like I, I should make me. maybe I'll make a little mini video like I'll have the full one and then the mini one like mm -hmm. Melanie Faye needs her SG back. Or something yeah, like I do. That. I do. Um, I don't know if you can hear that. My cat keeps meowing, but I'm going to let him outside. So cool. he'll like, yeah, sounds good. I'll work on your riff. All right. So we got that first phrase. Yeah. Yep. Then this is what a lot of people struggle with. So it's index finger, seventh fret, B string, hammer on to ring finger, ninth fret, B string. But then there's a slide up to the eighth fret, or sorry, the 10th fret. There's a slide up to the 10th fret. Oh, oh, to the 10th fret, yeah. Yes. And then a slide back down to the ninth fret. That's what, a lot of people struggle with that's the that sort of vocal inflection yeah and it's done all with one pick stroke so it's a pick and then the rest of it in your fretting hand exactly i think um one thing i really struggle with with the slide is uh timing it just right to make it sound like an inflection like, mm -hmm. like, do you go just, just past the fret tiny bit? Or do you go like way past the fret? Do you just try to get like, yeah. I go all the way to the edge of the fret. So yeah. you go deep within the next fret. You don't just it, like. Yep, exactly. Okay. Oops. I, I, and I get all like tense when I go to do it. Like. You know, where, whereas I guess just with repetition, it'll become more relaxed. Yeah, I used to be kind of tense too when doing that. And I'll have to watch the video because I'm not sure if, I know the next notes are those two notes, you but do I'm not this. sure. You go, you do like a backslide. So it's. Yeah. But you it... even audibly hear this, you hear. You hear that? Oh. Yeah. You literally pack as much of those things into it as humanly possible. So it sounds so vocal. Let I could me... I could play it if you want. Yeah. Could you play it uh like three fourth speed? Yeah, sure. I've already done uh, done that. <laughs> Half speed. Yeah, let me share that. Wait, play it back again. Oh, so after... It's not a pull-off, it's it's a picked note on the seventh fret of the okay. string. And then a pick slide, so pick slide, like... Right. Okay, so... Yes. Exactly. Yep, so. Yep. Cool. Oops. Exactly. Then this usually I do a hammer on 
whole step hammer on into the slide, but this time I didn't do a hammer on. I just played. So it's. Without the hammer on, it's a, it's eighth fret. Uh huh. Slide to the ninth fret, and this is on the G string, by the way. And then slide back to the eighth fret. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, after the, there's a whole step slide to the tenth fret. It's yeah. so weird to explain it note for note like this because so, when yeah. when I play it, I don't even think of it like oh eighth fret, then hammer on to tenth yeah, fret. Yeah, you're just yeah. you're just speaking. You know, you're you're expressing yourself. It's I know. I'm like, I'm excited to kind of hear you deconstruct your your style, but I could see why it might be uh, awkward for you. Yeah, it's like I have to really think about it. See, your, 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 this part, it almost sounds like two notes instead of three. That's how fast you do it. It almost sounds like. Right. Like a, yeah. hit the guitar on the beat so it's there's like ah. a, a dead note yeah. ah. Uh. exactly <laughs> and instead of like a a pick stroke it's more like a like a yeah exactly cool. okay like a thumb slap yeah yeah like how and i noticed players... that's kind of a big part of your style too right like kind of keeping the the groove yeah keeping the... the beat yep that's cool. the only way have you heard of um todd pritchard i have yes he's you rem your style and his style are similar in a sense, mm -hmm. and yeah, I love both of you guys. I've taken lessons with both of you. Now. Oh, nice. <laughs> Does he still teach lessons? Uh, I haven't seen him advertise for it for a while, but um, yeah, he does. He he does Zoom lessons. Nice. And he has We're a sound. The same wave. Yeah, he has a sound slice course too. Where he sound can, slice. Sound slice. Yeah, they're a platform where they they have like the lesson on top and um like tab on the bottom of the lesson oh and he I'm breaks gonna... down his instagram videos like that's the course oh. in these six instagram videos i'm gonna break down everything i do note for note and oh so uh, this yeah. is like um this is like uh patreon yeah uh no i i don't think it is i think sound slice probably pays a one-time fee or maybe a commission fee to the artist May, pro they probably do a commission or maybe they take like a certain percent and then you just buy people's courses on sound slice uh i'll have to look into that see that's the thing about the those those platforms i don't want them to get a commission i don't want them to get a cut yeah. <laughs> right mm -hmm. yeah i do patreon and uh I, I've noticed a lot of people have moved on to their own website and mm -hmm. just said, support me on my own website. So yeah. I hear you on that. Mm -hmm. You've got principles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's just me. But I'll look into Sound Slice, though. If I like the setup or the layout of the website from what I've seen. Yeah. All right. Let's see how I'm doing. So. Yeah. See, I get all like, I get all. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to do the slide. That's 
I used to too, but then like naturally after getting it in my muscle memory, I just kind of loosened up. Yeah. But I used to be like very, you know what I mean? Like I used to like move my whole body to do it. And then the slap. Cool. All right. Am I even doing the slap? I just hear the slap in the the loop, but I don't know if I'm actually doing it in the lead. I mean, in my eyes, the goal is not for you to recreate that moment 100%. If you're feeling the slap right now, then we're all feeling the slap right now. <laughs> nope. <laughs> all right. So the next phrase is... So it's six fret B G string, six fret G string, and a finger picked, and then picking this eighth fret G string ring finger. Exactly. So putting it all together, it's. And actually, those are both palm muted. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Uh. Okay. Nope. Yep. Then there's a slide from the fifth fret of the B string to the sixth fret of the B string. See, I like how you get that dynamic contrast between the... That has a kind of like... I love that... The timbre of that. It, right. it sounds like you're doing a bit of like a pull out with your nail maybe. But remember the slide first, so it's... Ah. Is that right? Exactly. Yep. So I know this lesson is for beginners, so do you want me to say the frets, like, every time I mention a new note or uh yeah I, I guess we can right so we go or i could help you with that as well so so g string six fret to eighth right yeah. then we do a slide from five to six on the b yeah. to seven to nine yeah. right exactly so that whole I'm going to do it in slow motion. Uh. <laughs> the slap feels so unnatural <laughs> to me. Uh. Okay, then we got... Uh. Cool. So that slap is unnatural. Who are some of your guitar influences? I know you said you play a lot of blues. Yeah, like I like to do things like, like, like I like to get that combo of the slap with the, but I've never used the slap in a lead single line context. Like just, ah. yeah, like I'm used to doing it during a chord. See, you're doing it while simultaneously strumming the chord, but that would be unnatural for me to like to hit it and yeah. strum it. 
that is what I yeah. studied with Todd for like three lessons in a row mm -hmm. was how to do that because that's his main thing is like he'll do the thumb slap but get even a single note with mm -hmm. like the first or second finger um, but yeah so you're, you're saying you do more of like a yes like if I were to play it I would do do it after the chord like yeah like while the chord is muted uh-huh something like that and while i'm doing the i am hitting it but i'm not actually picking these notes like it's oh right so the fact that you're doing all that legato you mm -hmm. can at the same time throw in a snare yeah exactly that's, that's but, really but cool it, that's one of those smoke and mirror yeah. things you must do mm -hmm. like uh yeah that's awesome but if i were to pick and do the thumb hit then i would struggle with it probably yeah i'd have to practice that yeah okay so we've got uh there we go so now it's it's a hammer on and it's a sixth fret to eighth fret on the G string hammer on and then a palm muted eighth fret note so uh. yep and then that Your vibrato, you do more of, of this kind of vibrato or the like BB King style? See, I do more the. Uh, it's it's halfway both. It's more of the like straight vertical down, uh -huh. but it is sort of that like, you know, sideways. It's halfway between. Right. you it looks like you're doing more of the yeah definitely yeah. more same with Ben's like more the, like the fulcrum mm -hmm. thing you know cool. and, and oh that, those last two notes right which and again I guess so right here you're probably feeling comfortable in that Exactly. Because that's a very bluesy way to end something, right? Like... Uh-huh. Yep. And then it just, uh... Those are staccato, the... Those two. So, it would be... And then it'll start back over. Yeah. So the second time it's... Exactly. Cool. So the whole first half is. Sometimes I like to go. Yeah. one's easy that's just B minor pentatonic yep. or... ah 
That note reminds me of you for some reason. That natural minor note? Yeah. yeah. It, because like, that... Yeah. That So I was stuck in the minor pentatonic box for a really long time, for all of middle school. And then when I went to the arts high school, then I discovered, oh, seven major <laughs> modes. Right. And then all the variations of the modes, like, you know, um, like you have like uh, Locrian, but then you have like Locrian flat four, which is also known as super Locrian or the altered scale. So I discovered all those different modes. But prior to discovering that, I was just major pentatonic, minor pentatonic, and that was it. Yeah. And then I knew how to play the major scale because I was in the middle school band. So mm -hmm. I played euphonium. I right. played baritone. Um, so we practiced the major scale up and down in band. So yeah, that's all I knew. Major scale, major pentatonic, and then natural or minor pentatonic. So when I got to the high school, one of the first things I discovered was natural minor. And then I discovered that natural minor is a seven note version of the minor pentatonic scale so yeah yeah like penta means five and tonic means note which i didn't actually know at first but then i discovered that essentially minor pentatonic is an abbreviated version of the natural minor scale right so that note or what was it that's that natural minor note that I didn't know before. So then once I discovered it, then I started leaning on that note. Yeah, totally. It's funny with a lot of beginners don't realize that the they think like um, the diatonic and pentatonic are separate scales. Yeah. So what you just pointed to, like, no, we just add these missing notes back and then we have we have the full scale, yeah. Yep. But I think the way you used it right there, was it like a major seventh? in that context, like, I don't know the underlying chord, but, like, is the chord, no, the chords, what is the chord going on right there? The chords, if I were to just play the, the basic triad voicings of the chords, it would be, that's in, that's a F sharp major, and then a half step down, F minor and then B minor. Okay, so you're you're playing that note over the over the B minor. So yeah. it's two. But what I'm doing when I voice the chords, it's actually these voicings. Ah. And then for the B minor, I'll do two voicings, so it's that one and then this one. So that well, note is in the yeah. it's in the chord. Awesome. Yeah. I think maybe it's um it seems like you like to really use two sus two, add nine. Mm -hmm. It's like a big thing you like to add to your chords. Yeah. Cool. All right, so I think we've got the whole thing. Uh, and then we can go over those chords in a little more detail, how you took the basic triads and turned There was into... one more part. The, okay, so cool. after... Um... like you but it was that part it's oh that's a hammer on yeah and then so uh uh you come up to the up here to the uh, uh eighth fret so that one it's between my ring finger and pinky so it's
Oh, you're going. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Exactly. Love it. And that's the whole thing? Yep. Thank you for for walking us through that. Just to save people the 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 boredom of me trying to now mint it out, I'm gonna mm -hmm. make that my homework. <laughs> <Dope>. <laughs> cool. But uh, let's go over the chords then. So, so here's me after doing my homework. The chords feel natural. The melody, adding those little slides, still feels very unnatural. So my groove is kind of suffering. But this is a great challenge, and I'm looking forward to incorporating some of these techniques to the point where they feel natural and come out naturally in my playing. Took a you took a G major? No, to an F sharp minor? Or was it's it? It's an if I were to play the triads, it would be F sharp major, then it would be F7, and then B minor. If I were to play the basic okay. triad voicings of the chord. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's the triad voicings of the, the chords. But what I'm actually doing is what would that make this one? It's it's a it's an F sharp major seven, but with an added. I know what is that? Uh, oh, I'm adding a nine, so so it's an F major nine then. Uh, so uh, we've got ninth fret. So it's like, imagine that major seven shape, right? Oh, you're starting with your pinky, got it. For the major seven, but what I'm doing instead is I'm, where my pinky and ring finger are, I'm actually using ring and middle finger, so that way my pinky is free to play the nine. Got it. Yeah. So three, two, one, four, right? Yes, exactly. So, and I'm playing the A string, G string, and B string. So I'm not playing the D string. I'm not playing the major oh, okay. third. Uh, so root fifth ninth. Root fifth ninth. So, so then your second finger doesn't really have to be down anyway then, right? Yeah, it doesn't. But like, why not? Yeah, okay. Awesome. Now, quick question. Like, I know some people would say, okay, this comes from the caged C shape, right? Do you... Uh, was that a big part of you figuring out chord voicings, or do you just think about the scale and, and extracting the intervals from the scale? How do you go about, you know, coming up with your chord voicings? Um, I think I know how to embellish chords, so I I kind of experiment with different embellishments, and that's how I'll come up with, you know, the different chord voicings or substitutions. So you'll voice them in a way where you know you can add an embellishment to it. Yeah, I like to play my chords in a way where my pinky finger is free so that way I can add the embellishment. Like you know Jimi Hendrix, 
instead of playing a G major like this, you know, the cage system, capo yeah. index finger on the third fret, and then E major shape, he'll wrap his thumb around to the bass note and then play just the top four strings yeah. of the chord. So that way the pinky finger can go. Absolutely. So I like to do that too, because with jazz chord melody, you want to leave the pinky finger free to do the embellishments yep. or do the top line. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So. Awesome. So, and then your, your arrangement. I think you moved it up. You moved the key up. I think oh, it's. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Something about today, it's just pulling us up a half step. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I used my floating bridge today because I thought maybe yep. we'd need it. I need it. I have to have my floating bridge on my Strat style guitars. Nice. Yeah. Or S style. S style guitars. Well, that Mustang is cool too. Do you like the the whammy on your Mustang? It probably has a different kind of action on it. Yeah, I love the whammy. It's like I've never had a Mustang until last year, yeah. and the whammy just is like limitless it goes all the way up and then it goes all the way down it's just wow it's like very very floating yeah yeah and it, it's wild different feel too right because i played a jazz master for a while mm -hmm. and i felt like just chord vibrato was mm -hmm. maybe a little more musical on those kinds of bridges whereas on the strat like it's hard to get the subtle like it's so mm -hmm. responsive on the strat see um, i think yeah. it's it's more responsive on the Mustang. It's very wobbly, very like wild, like very wonky. It's oh. it and it feels very loose. It's like I can pull it so far up and then oh, so wow. far down. But then the way my strat is set up, it's or I think it depends on the setup. It's like not very floating. Mm -hmm. It's like so I can't actually pull it that high. Right. Yeah, and there's a lot of resistance that I feel on this strat. But Got it. different um strats of mine are different like this one isn't um set up to where it's floating that high but then my keys will over here like the uh i got a keysel s style yeah i saw that in your tiny desk that one looks cool this one's got my name on it which i really think is cool oh that's awesome but um that one is set up a lot different than this one so it can be more wild. Cool. So it's just one, two, three, then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, the whole time. So, so that F major nine. And then the thumb slap. Yep. And then on the second one. I'm essentially doing this with that note on top. So it's a... Is that an augmented chord? Yeah. Or that's root third. What is that? That's like a... That's like a major six. No, it's not. It's a, it's a minor six. So root... Major third, minor six, then octave, and then the fifth on top. So what? I don't even know what that would be, actually. I think it is augmented. One, three, augmented five. Oh. Yeah, one, three, augmented. Sharp five. Yeah, sharp five, yeah. And then, yeah. I know that that chord is the first chord from it brings a tear to my eyes uh ray charles um when i begin to realize what's the name of that song i actually Dr only drown know in my drown in my own tears the first chord oh is, is an augmented chord yeah that does sound very ray charles even though i'm not familiar with the song you're talking about i only know like two ray charles songs <laughs> Georgia on my mind and um uh what's that one 
uh, hit the road, Jack, and then what's the one that Kanye sampled? Uh, she give she uh, if I got a woman, or, my, I got a woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a woman, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Another person whose guitar style you would like, uh, who covered this song, which is why I know it, is Jeff Buckley. Jeff Buckley. Yeah. I I know his one hit. And wasn't his dad also an artist, Tim Buckley? Yes, Tim or? Buckley, right, exactly. Yeah, I'm not familiar with either of them. I just yeah. know like one or two songs. But. What's cool with Jeff is he would just do solo, Telecaster, and sing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he would cover like lots of great R&B and soul and jazz, like Nina Simone and Ray Charles and folks like that. Uh, but yeah, I heard him play the song and then I, I went and checked out the original. So cool, we've got this this augmented chord root. Love it. And so you probably just sounded that out, I'm guessing. You were like, I like the sound of that, and so I'm gonna make that the chord. See, what I was doing was actually the F7 like this. But then I realized I could put my pinky on the E string instead. So then, got that. So I yeah. think in the video, I'm only playing the A string, G string, and high E string. So it's, uh, there it is. Ah, got it. It's actually G string, so A, G, high E. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And then, B minor, I'm doing a B minor 7 with an added, uh, what is that, with an added minor 7 on the ninth fret of the B string. So I'm playing low E, G, and B. Okay. Okay, then, so, uh-huh. I'll switch voicing, so that's the B minor seven with the added minor seven on the B string. Then I'll do uh, what would that be? That's a that's a minor nine. Yeah. And yeah. you just do those three. Exactly, just those three. Cool. So. So the whole thing. It's. minimalist it is you know mm -hmm. uh, okay so uh, is that and then yeah uh, sweet exactly that's it now like your uh, who are you influenced by currently in terms of like, because now you're doing producing, right? And mix and uh, beat making and um, in your arrangements, are there any people right now that you're really liking their aesthetic and kind of use, using that influence in your creativity? Yeah, I, I really love Eric Gales. He's like my favorite guitar player. I love how he, I love his rendition of Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix. I had never heard anything like that before. And I think the reason why I like it so much is because he substitutes all these like, you know, triad bar chords for more interesting jazz chords and adds passing chords. B flat seven sharp five sharp nine, then C minor major seven. Eric Gales doesn't use this, but I use this with super low grain. That's an E minor. That's an Eric Gales riff. 
I love it. He sometimes adds those classical riffs in yeah, his playing. Yeah, yeah. Which I saw your uh, earlier how you took the Bach thing and yeah, like, yeah, and, and you just it, yeah. discovered how to make it kind of groove. It yeah. was so cool watching you like process the, um, that. something like that yeah but um eric gills is like my all-time favorite guitar player just never heard anybody play those rich beautiful jazz chord voicings with the crazy passing chords on guitar because it's not even usually guitar players that use passing chords they'll do like a dominant seven or like right. a diminished seven yeah but he's doing like dominant seven sharp five sharp nine or like yeah uh he'll do like minor major or like just something really crazy you know i just i really love eric gales but um recently i got put on to knowledge mm -hmm. he's a producer or he's like he has this mixtape i think or album it's like a it's samples of different the album's called 1988 and it's like different samples of songs from the 80s and 90s and or it sounds very 80s and 90s like slow jam sort of stuff i really love knowledge now that i've discovered him that i cool. got put onto him and then um who else i like tennyson yeah tennyson has this song called all yours that i really like and uh i think they have a song called like what yeah i like that song who else do I really like? Um, oh, I love Bareface from Brockhampton. He's just the best. I love the song Waste. Yeah. I have a, a long list of miscellaneous influences. Yeah, I just love music, pretty much. Awesome. And guitar. <laughs> so I know where time flies. We started at 11. Wow. So I want to ask you some things just about like being an artist in 2020 um and uh, yeah so like i'm curious when you when you started your journey uh what are some obstacles you faced in terms of like just your own self self-limiting beliefs and also the self-limiting beliefs of society just the way that it's set up the things that it um, rewards verse, which is usually not art, <laughs> you know what I mean, in general. Um, or you mean, although it, it, it does, but I'm sorry, you, yeah, you go ahead. Or you mean, um, in terms of success or like, uh, like financial stability or? Um, no, I, I'm just wondering when you decided to go full time as an artist and pursue your craft uh did you face obstacles both within yourself and within the world around you and if you did what were they and what did you do to push through those or to, oh. grow, to grow through those does, um, does that make sense did i phrase that in a way that makes sense yeah um i guess uh people around me did not have you know the sort of mindset that I had when it came to uh, being self-employed and running my own business or being a full-time musician. So a lot of people doubted me. Um, but then when I, you know, blew up and started collaborating with successful musicians and being a successful musician, then um, I'm, maybe people were doubting me, but I didn't, I definitely wasn't doubting myself. I was never doubting myself. And I never really had any limiting beliefs or, yeah, I don't think so. I always knew that I was gonna be a guitar player and I knew that I was going to be influential. Yeah, I always knew that. I knew I was gonna be something. I was gonna be a big deal. I just knew that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you, you've so you've had that faith from the get-go yeah i just knew this is what i was going to do so but um 
and I just knew it would work out. I knew I would figure it out. So, yeah. That's awesome. That um, that confidence and faith in yourself. Do you feel like that had anything to do with um, the way you're brought up and your and your uh, family? Um, probably not. You know, my parents were both chemists, and they had a very is would they be left brain or right brain predominant? I think we're right brain predominant, which I meant to say I'm also a lefty who plays guitar righty. Oh, <laughs> why is that? I just someone bought me a right handed guitar. Oh, so you just had to <laughs> figure it out. But I do play, I do write left handed and eat left handed. Yeah, but me too. I'm right hand predominant, so I would throw with my uh, oh. right hand and like. Um, do any physical activity with my right hand. I play pool, righty. That's the only thing. I, and kick. <laughs> yeah, I definitely play pool right-handed. Or right-handed is where you hold the, the stick. With your right, right hand. Right. Yeah. 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 And then I kick with my right foot. Yeah. So you said your parents were chemists. So yeah. as far as the music thing, it wasn't really... Like... Yeah, they they were just more realistic. They but then when I started getting successful, they were like, "Oh, okay, I see." But um yeah, before I was successful, I think they wanted me to um be more realistic with what I pursue. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. As far as like so you had the vision and you knew, "All right, I'm going to make this work." Um, did you have to make a lot of sacrifices to get it together, uh, you know, through, you're young still. I mean, I didn't really start taking guitar serious until I was your age. Mm -hmm. um, so do you feel like you had to like work on certain routines and disciplines and structure or was it always just, this is what I do? Um, I never had a very rigid or structured practice routine. I've always just practiced whenever I felt like. And even if I didn't practice after school, I still was in guitar class every day. So right, yeah. even if there was like a day or two out of the week where I didn't really practice, because I had a job in high school, I worked at Subway, made $7.25 an hour. So even if I didn't practice, I still had guitar class and to, you know, practice during and keep my chops up and learn new stuff. So, um, but I never, I never had like a rigid or structured practice routine, but um, I feel like I'm just now coming into my adulthood. So I'm 22. So I'm like, um, I'm just now starting to be more structured in life you know yeah but previously i was just like living my life i was just touring and traveling and like i was just doing whatever so i wasn't there wasn't like a lot of structure i was just like having fun but now i'm starting to buckle down and uh prioritize things i need to prioritize even if they're things that i don't want to do and i'm I'm being more of an adult now. I'm yeah. wearing the wearing my adult hat. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And especially now that I'm teaching, you know, I really have been teaching every day since the pandemic, um, or maybe not even since the beginning of the pandemic, but since like, you know, two months into the pandemic. Yeah, like two months into the pandemic, I've been teaching every single day. So now I have less time. It's not like all the time is free time. It's like I got to be on point with my schedule because yeah. I, I schedule everything so tight, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You have time for one more question? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Um, so we already mentioned Todd Pritchard. So one thing I talked with him about was how he had to like stop his social media because he was like being so distracted from his artistry. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you in a very short time went from posting your 
Instagram videos and everything to then like blowing up, as you said, shout outs from John Mayer, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, all that stuff. Do you find it hard to balance um, the business and social media aspect versus the creative artistry? And if you do, what are um, some things you've, you know, had to do to balance those things? Yeah, that's something that I'm figuring out now. Um, that's something that I I do struggle with. I find it hard to post a guitar video every single day and, you know, respond to emails and teach and learn new things and yeah. tend to my business and, you know, record guitar loops and yeah. you know it's just there's so many things that I can be doing yeah there's so many there's so much there's just so many things I could be doing right now with my time because when you run your own business you're not clocking in and clocking out for someone else you just create your own schedule so I do find it hard to post consistently and teach it's like that's a that's something that I'm working on now, like finding the balance. Because lately, it's just been I've been teaching and responding to all the thousands of emails. Sounds like you need an yeah. assistant. See, I could get an assistant, but then, um, yeah, I just I don't want I I just want to do it all myself. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to. I just feel like if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself, mm. and I just. I got to do it myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And your emails are long. Like when I when I wanted to uh, take that group lesson, you gave me so much information and the mm -hmm. lesson plan. Like you really, you're diligent and it seems like yeah. in all areas. Mm -hmm. Yep. I try to be. Yeah. I have to be. Yep. Well, hey, this was awesome. Thank you for being generous with your time. Uh, Melanie, and, Melanie and I have one more one-on-one -on -one lesson I bought a two-pack yep <laughs> I will figure out what specifically uh, I would love to learn learn next from you but already learned so much thanks for taking the time thank you and uh, have a great week have a good one all right everybody I hope you enjoyed that interview and lesson with Melanie Fay as much as I did if you want to see more lessons and interviews like this be sure to subscribe and if you want to support this channel and access all of the supporting resources to go along with all of my YouTube videos as well as live weekly face-to-face -face small group lessons be sure to check out patreon.com slash pow music thank you to all of the current pow music patrons that make this content possible happy playing and I'll see you next time